Matthew 21, 23. Now Jesus has gone to the temple. What would Jesus do? He, he tramples everything around. And the other Gospels get in more detail of what happened. And the thing is, he leaves the temple, stays overnight, the curse of the fig tree. And within that time, I know, I know personally, doing the farmer's market street ministry, the vendors have gone up to the, the person in charge and to the city, to the mayor, even. The mayor of Daytona Beach knows me because by street preaching. Uh, uh, this guy over here is screaming hollow. You know, he's ruining my business. He's causing all kinds of trouble. You won't believe what he said. He called me this. He called this and all blah, blah, blah. Just a bunch of lies and all that to get rid of the religious nut. I mean, Jesus Christ and then was a religious nut. The Pharisees and the scribes and the chief priests has been told by, which I read today, closing Mark, for envy. That's why they bought Jesus to Pilate. He was getting all the people. He's getting all, the, all, everybody was listening to him. So here we are. When he was come to the temple, not church, temple. That temple disappears 70 AD. And what Jesus would do is usually, I believe it's around the, the, the treasury area. But though he never collected any money. <laughs> Pastor, did you hear that one? The chief priests, those are the ones that were set up of Aaron. By God and Moses. Those how chief priests. There was only to be one chief priest, Aaron and his son. <clears throat> when Aaron died, his son took over. And the elders of the people, that's you know, the, the old ones, that we call them uh, uh, elderly. They're supposed to be the ones with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. They're supposed to be the ones with the history of the nation. Came unto him as he was teaching. So what's happening is they interrupt him. And they're always interrupting him. Though he never interrupts anybody. So he's got himself, a, 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 I want to say a nook. He's got himself a room. He's got it somewhere in the temple. And he's got people listening to him, and he's teaching them, and they're fascinated. And they come in, <clears throat> hello. <laughs> they're rude. Now, as far as what you read about the Pharisees and scribes and the priests and all that, what would you think it would be done if you interrupted them? Now, I have in times past interrupted the Catholic Church, but before their service or after their service, standing out on the sidewalk, never going in to interrupt the service. I have done with Sunday school. I had waited for Sunday school to be over, took the teacher off to the side, explained to him, hey, you know, you, you taught wrong. I had one church where I text the pastor, and no one else knew. <laughs> But here they come. And if you want to be interrupted, you go into a, any public ministry within time. Somebody's going to come up and interrupt you. I had it many times in street ministries. Uh, when I was in prison, I allowed questions. That was, that's not interrupting. That was something that was allowed. But here these religious people come up to Jesus, who is God, who is the Messiah, interrupts him. And here's the thing, by what authority does thou these things? What things? Well, they got no more doves. The animals have been chasing off. The tables were knocked over. The people were offended. They were, they were all upset. And the fact is that he's sitting in their temple, because Jesus already said, your, your house, not God's house. That was not called God's house, by the way, by Jesus. He says, your house, what are you doing in our place teaching? And now throughout the life of Jesus and Paul, it seems to be a thing that in the synagogue, when they taught and read from the scriptures, the roles, there was a time afterwards that there was questions and answers or something. Because even Paul would wait to the end of the service and then he would teach the people, and they would get upset because the people would turn to Paul, the apostles, Peter, and John, rather than the rabbis. <laughs> so here they are. What authority? Who gives you? Because you didn't go to Temple University. You didn't go to Temple 
synagogue. You didn't go to temple. And I see a lot of preachers today. You got to be of their school, their people, their class. And you know, Charity Bible Baptist Institute, which is no more, sorry to say, Greg East, well, you know, that's not a well named school, so what? I seem to be knowing more than you do because you are doing things you're not supposed to be doing. You are celebrating things because the people like them, not because they're biblical. Now, I've told you to your face. You have stood for the word of God that is not even the word of God. But I didn't go to XYZ school. I didn't go. I didn't sit under Dr. Solar. So, and they hate the fact is that I'm a doctor. And a lot of times... When I do my commentaries and I do these things on, on Facebook, I will say, Dr. Stiley William Hayward, I have the diploma. I have an official letter. But my Facebook is Stiley William Hayward, DD. Dumb dog. Which means Doctor of Divinity. That means, you know, your doctor gets up in the pulpit. I have the same skills he does. I just probably didn't need to learn Hebrew and Greek because I speak English. I've sat under preachers, and they talk these big words like, what the heck does that mean? Well, you know, in the Greek, go over Greece, 2023, and they don't even speak the Greek that the Bible spoke in Greek. And I get them upset. I say, I say you know what? I, I, I know Greek. Do you do? And I said, yeah. I dated a little Greek girl who owned a pizza rama. Oh, you didn't mean, oh, oh, you're talking about words that we don't speak no more. So let me get you a Greek newspaper, let me get you a Hebrew newspaper, and open up before the, the, the church, before the Sunday school, start reading it. Okay? What authority? The book of Proverbs written by, uh, I believe, Solomon and other writers, but, you know, titles don't mean, people want titles. Well, in, in New Jerusalem, there's a title. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and Christians. Doctor, no, no, there's no Dr. Christians. Now, maybe we, we will call the apostles the apostles. That's out of respect. But I ain't going to go up to anybody in heaven or to New Jerusalem. I don't blame good. Dr. Joe? No, I don't think so. Who gave you these authority? All right, here's the chief priest. He's the priest of all the priests. I mean, you don't even find Pharisees and Sadducees and the Sanhedrin in the Old Testament. You don't see them. Notice that? You don't see the, 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 scribe, I mean, the, the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees because they're not in the law. The law, chief priests, temple, the elders, you find them in the law. You will find them in the writings of Moses and Joshua, I believe. Notice how you find here the people that are involved in the Old Testament writings, not the Pharisees and Sadducees or the Sanhedrin. They're not there. Chief priests would have been Aaron, the elders. They were, they were people that Moses called out to be judges. They were elders. Many times God said, call the elders of Israel and bring them before me. There they are. This here, verse 23, I don't know if you recognize, is an old law Moses gathering of the people. Because God would say to Moses, and Moses would be in the part, call Aaron your brother and the elders of the people, we're going to talk. And here it is. But they're not doing right. And God is there, unless you're a Jehovah Witness, because there's God, Jesus, there's the chief priest, there's the elders. That's the law. Right there. I don't even know they know what they're doing. And there were a couple times that Israel come up to Moses. Aaron and, and, and Miriam came up to Moses one time. The children of Israel came up. What gives you the authority? Who do you think you are? Even, uh, oh boy, then, uh, 
the sons of Aaron there, that they were in charge of the ark and all that. Even they came up, well, who do you think you are? But listen, God gave you the greatest... God gave you the greatest thing to carry, though you didn't see the Ark of the Covenant, the, the altar of incense, the brazen altar, and still they came up to Moses and who do you think you are? We'd be better. That's exactly what you're doing. What you see is played out in the wilderness. Who do you think you are? And there are people in the Baptist church, sorry to say they do that. Why don't you call him to be a Sunday school teacher? Why don't you be call him? Why, why, I should be a pastor of this church. Listen, some of the churches that kicked me out, I'd be a better pastor than the pastor in that church. I haven't been called to that. I thought I was at one time, but I've seen over the years, I've seen the last few years, I, I don't have the strength to do that. I have the strength to do the ministry of the internet. So well, who, who gives him the right to be talking on the internet and do something like that? God has. Because everything I do is from the Holy Spirit, unless it's in the flesh. So what they're trying to do, and you know, okay, so what is Jesus doing? He's teaching. Who's he teaching? People. What's the chief priest, the elders come up? Well, he's got the people there. Let's put him on the spot in front of everybody. And what they will do is they will leave Jesus. They'll come back to us. Happy, glory, land. We'd be the best ones again. Notice he's not doing it in the Jewish synagogue. He's doing it where he is supposed to be, though he's not there no more. I mean, God and, and the character, because the temple is just. Where did you read in the law that, that in the temple, in the tabernacle, that they were supposed to be selling all this stuff? Where did you read in, in, the, in the law of Moses? Oh, before you do anything, you got to wash your hands. There was a washing. There was a ceremonial washing, but that was the priest. And notice how, how it's carried over the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. What does mom always tell? Make sure you wash your hands before you sit down at the table. Oh, come on, mom, that's a, that's a Phariseeism. And we come back to it with COVID. What, 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 what was this? Somebody said, I, I may be wrong about this, but when you wash your hands, say, Mary had a little lamb, his feet was something. It's, it's one of those stupid songs you're supposed to sing, and when you're done singing, that's you wash your hands. I forget. There was one that, you know, Mary had a little, 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 something like that while you're washing your hands. I forget what it was. Now, five or ten years down the road, the Lord tells you, find all that washing your hands it made, it's going to make you something. Because <laughs> America is great for making you do something to lay around down the road. Oops! Nuclear is great. Oh, where do we put it now? Well, where I come from, Waterford, Connecticut, they were putting the used rods in a baseball field, burying it. Oh, that's not what you do with it. Hey, hey, we got this diabetes message. Wow, that's great. I gave everybody this diabetes message. And now when you go in the hospital, they ask you, have you been in this message? Why? Oh, I know why. Because it gives you cancer. I, I'm, go I'm going back on my blood pressure med medication. I was off it for a while. But there's, I got to check. There's a blood pressure medication out there. It's doing more harm than good. I had, I was giving antibiotics. I'm on, I got kidney, fa I got kidney failure because of antibiotics. I told the doctor at the hospital, I, I got stage 3B kidney failure, so they gave me antibiotics that will make my kidney worse. So they're trying to catch Jesus. If, is it okay for us to get divorced? What about this woman caught in adultery? What about this? What about that? What about paying taxes? They're not, this is a person that will come up to you where the king gets his wife. How to get all the animals to the, to the ark, right through the one door. I mean, what else? Sure didn't have a fire exit. Now, I've been in public mission where I have somebody come up to me. I've got a serious question. And they will say, I've got a question. And you hear the question, you know it's sincere, you know it's right, and then you'll take the time to answer it. I had in my time, I had one guy, he'd come up to me, and he didn't ask a question, but, you know, he did the devil thing. I'm an atheist. Is this something that's told me? Talk to him. And we got done with the, He found out he was actually an agnostic. Didn't know what an agnostic was, and I taught him. Hopefully today he's come to Christ. They're trying to catch Jesus in front of everybody to make him look bad that they will leave him. They want a church split. And everybody come back to them. And this happens in the church. <laughs> One group will go against the other group. Sometimes, you know, the rug is red. We want it purple. 
well, you know, my family's played that organ and from great grandma, great great grandma, great, great 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 grandma. How dare they call that person to do it? You know, it's just. And Jesus answers, said unto him. Now, Jesus doesn't get rude, he doesn't get crude. He uses wisdom. There are people who say, well, you know, I let my light shine. And I'll say, well, is it artificial light or is it real light? <laughs> they walk away. Well, <laughs> I also will ask you one thing. Now, it, I was talking... You know, I realize today, my English growing up at school was not the English today. I'm, I'm writing my commentary, so, you know, you don't put a comma there. I was told to put a comma there. You know how many times my teacher yelled at me for, put, you have to put a comma, and now today they say you don't, so I don't. But there, there was something, you, you never answer a question with a question. I don't know what that's called. I remember that. So they ask him a question, what authority? You know, he says, I will ask you one thing. <laughs> It's not really a question, but it will lead up to a question. Good English, Jesus. Jesus, press one. What if, excuse me, which, if ye tell me, I will likewise will tell you by what authority I give you. So here's my question. If you answer my question right, I will answer yours. The baptism of John, John the Baptist. Jesus never called him. I don't think Jesus ever called him John the Baptist. He said the baptism of John. Back in early part of Matthew, early part of Jesus' life. The forerunner. Whence was it? From heaven or of man? Who authorized John to baptize? That, that's what he's saying. You want to know what authority I do it? All right, let's look at John. What's his authority? And they reason with themselves, hopefully, saying, if we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, why did you not then believe him? Oh, see, they know the answer. But they don't want to answer the question correctly. Because he would come back and say, well, why haven't you believed in God? With everybody sitting there. Oh, why don't you guys believe what God said? Their correct answer would put them down in front of everybody. You know why I didn't get baptized from John the Baptist? Because it did not meet their approval on their traditions. You know why the Catholic Church won't obey the Bible? Because the Pope and the tradition say not to. I was talking to my mom last night. We grew up in a Polish Catholic family. And I never knew I never, I never heard this before, and I'm not saying my mom's a liar. I'm saying just never heard this before. But when you get, my mom was a Catholic. My dad was nothing but nothing at all. She had to sign a paper in the Catholic Church that any children she was going to have, she would have to bring them up Catholic. I never heard that. That's Catholic. And I'm laying in bed last night. I said, hmm, that's interesting. Talking to my mom. Oh, wait a minute, Baptist Catholic again. Baptist Catholic, Catholic Baptist. You take your pick. When I was in a church in Connecticut, they would have baby dedication. You would bring your, your baby up there and you would dedicate him to the Lord. Uh, that's the same thing the Catholics did if you married a non-Catholic. You have, you have to sign a piece of paper there. You can't get away from that Catholicism in the Baptist church. So, they say, from heaven, they say, well, not, why have you not believed on him? Stating to the fact is that John was of heaven, of God, Isaiah 40. You see, the, 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 the thing is, the trouble is, they know exactly who Jesus is. But if Jesus were to be king of kings, lord of lords, sit down on David's throne, guess who would lose their job? Because the office of the, in the millennium is going to go to the Zadok family. Jesus knows they're wicked and terrible. They know they're wicked and terrible. And their main trouble right now, going by the Roman government, which declared Jesus 
five times innocent. Pilate's wife, Pilate and Herod, I find no fault in him. Have nothing to do with that just man. Herod, I find no fault in him. Jesus turned around and nailed them on the spot. But if we say of men, okay, well, men called John, men put John, we fear the people, and you have every right to fear the Jews. The Jews throughout history would pick up stones, they'd be ready to aim them at you. And from the wilderness journey, the guy picking up sticks. You want us to kill him? All right. You want us to kill Aiken? All right, rocks. For it all held John as a prophet. Oh, wait a minute. If it came of heaven, he'll say, why didn't you believe him? If we say, you know, of man, the people count John as a prophet. Where would John get his prophet authority? From heaven. Because he sure wasn't a, a false prophet. Because they know and declare that John said, there is the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world. There they are speaking to him right now. They know everything about Jesus. Well, we, we, we weren't born out of whoredoms. They knew that Mary had not had intercourse with any man when, when Jesus. They bring it to he, she was cheated on Joseph. And they answered Jesus and said, we cannot tell. So Jesus gave them a question which they could not answer. Because both of them pointed to John the Baptist, baptism, as a heavenly event, whether by heaven or whether by the people. We cannot tell. And he said unto him, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things, which is God, which he is God, but Christ is in a fleshy body right now. Though he's 100% God, 100% man, he still has a power and authority over him. God, though he is God, go ahead, try to explain the, the, uh, the Trinity. You can't. And I mean, there's one thing where, where the uh, Jehovah Witnesses, well, you know, Jesus said, not the angels, only the Father knows, not even the Son. Well, see, he's not God. He doesn't, in the human form, it looks like he didn't have all the power, but he did because he's God. We're not talking about that. So, the jaws of the of the chief priests and the elders are dropped to the ground, cleaning the floor of dirt and pigeon poop and oxen poop. Jesus comes back and says, but what think ye? <laughs> now just stop right there. He just gave them a question which they could not even think about. He goes, what do you think? And they're right there. To, <laughs> Heaven or men? Heaven or men? If we answer this, it'd be... Yeah. No matter what we say, guys, we're in trouble. He goes, what thinking? You know what they're thinking? We wish we never interrupted you. That's what we're thinking. A certain man, that certain man usually, they'll say a parable of the two sons. It's not really a parable because certain man means Jesus has a man in mind, but he hasn't given him a name. There was a certain rich man that was that was in hell. He had a he had a, a servant or somebody outside his gates who was poor, Lazarus. So it's not really a parable because it is tied to a man that's unnamed. Let's say I say, you know, I got a pile of garbage out in front of our house. We're cleaning up our house and and then Daytona Beach, if you put a garbage pile in front of your house, you got visitors. I don't know where they come from. You got visit. They will go through your garbage and they will break your chairs, the morons. But if, if I told my daughter, she came and said, you know, there was a certain car that pulled up and a man, you, go, you know that thing, that, that table you talked, yeah. You know, there was a certain man, he pulled up, he had a, he had a red Cadillac, whatever it was, he took that table away. Well, who was he? He was a certain man. That's what it is. It's not a, well, you know, Rachel, let me tell you, there was this story. This guy came up in a car. He took it. 
took the table and he, no, it's not a parable. Now, it was like our neighbor, B, came over here. She saw that chair. You left, she took it. Okay, that's a certain woman. Name. Certain man is somebody in mine had two sons. So, what's the illustration of the story? What we're talking about, or he's talking to the chief priests, plural, and the elders. He came to the first. He said, son, go work today in my vineyard. Vineyard and Isaiah uh, 5 verses 1 through 7 is Jerusalem. So talking to the chief, uh, talking to the chief priests, plural, and the elders, he said, there's a man in a vineyard, and we're going to talk about another vineyard tomorrow night, or Friday night, in Jerusalem. And he's talking to the chief. He might be mentioning one of them. He might be talking about a certain man that is known to Jerusalem, but he's got two sons and there's a vineyard. Go work today in my vineyard. Now this would be God, too. The vineyard is Jerusalem. I have a job for you to do. Go into the Jerusalem and do my work. And he answered, said, the son, I will not. This is a lot of Christians. God will call you to do something. Oh, I'm not doing that. Whatever reason, whatever excuse, you're not going to do that. But afterwards, he repented and went. And, you know, you get to the point, God, I should really do what God told me to do. Lord God, forgive me. I'm sorry. And I'm going. Help me. I'll go. A lot of missionaries are like that. A lot of you evangelists are like that. A lot of you preachers are like that. A lot of you Sunday school. A lot of people who have done work in the ministry of Jesus at one point in time said, no, I ain't doing it. And then you repent and you go. That can't be church. So, he's out there in the fields working. We already read about a group of men that went out there in the penny of a day. And they all got the same penny. And he went to the second son and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. Ooh, respectful. And went not. So, if the father go walking by the vineyard, oh, Jimmy, he said he wasn't going to do it. He repented. He, there he is. He's picking grapes or raking, whatever. George, where's George? Well, I don't know. He, never, he said he was going to be here. He never showed up, sir. And there are people in the church I'm going to go do this, and they don't. He says, one of them, twain, two, twain means two, unless you go to a southern, not saying, not saying southern, but you go to a church down south, college, or your father is a preacher of a church, and he sends you to his college, and he doesn't even know what the word twain is. Ha <laughs> ha! My, uh, my degree, I could tell you what Twain means, too. Just told you. And when he said the Twain, he, he didn't know what the Twain was. It's a previous story in Matthew. I forget which one, but, you know, it says Twain. I don't know really, uh, what it means. They said unto him, the first. The first one. The one who said, I will not, but then he repented and got right. Jesus said to him, Verily I say unto you, that publicans and harlots go into the kingdom of God. There's heaven. God, not earth, uh, kingdom, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. That's heaven. That's where God is. That's the angels, the seraphims, four and twenty-four elders of their yet, their yet, because I don't know who they are. There's a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. He's talking about now, not the millennial kingdom, he's talking about eternity. He says the public and the harlots. You know, public and the harlots in some of your churches, today, I can think of one church in Mr. Connecticut. Who don't allow them? 
You know, they got the, the, the Mercedes and the Cadillacs and whatever in the parking lot. Some of them got the doctors and, you know, politician things like that. They were not. The publicans in hearts, that's not Republicans, that's publican. Those are quite opposite of the chief priests and the elders. They will go into heaven before the chief priests and the elders of the people. That's what he's saying. You think the chief priests and the elders, Pharisees, Sadducees, and Christ, you think they're doing the work of God, but they're not doing the work of God. You would think that the popes and the cardinals and the priests and the nuns, you know, we're doing the work of the Lord. Oh, no, you're not. You're doing the work of Satan. I saw one of my friends posted a picture on Facebook today, yesterday or today, because there's a homeless man, and he looks cruddy, and all, he looks like your typical homeless man. And he's sitting up against the building, he's got his feet on the saw, and he's reading his Bible. That would be the last one. That would be the last one in these high, fancy, glorious churches and people. You would think that would be the last one you would think would be in heaven. That would be the first one you'd be getting rewards in heaven. So he's addressing the high priest of, of all the nation, the elders, the, the, the wisdom, the, the knowledge, the understanding of all the nation. And what he just said about, well, I'll do the work of God, and they don't. Heaven is going to be full of publicans and harlots. Where the rich man can't even get through the eye of a needle, and I'm not talking about a gate. Now, there are rich people in heaven. J.C. Penny was a rich man that gave his tithe. He gave the people the day off church services. And he never made a big deal like Chick-fil-A and Fox News. Which, by the way, is a Southern Baptist organization. They don't even know what Bible to believe. Okay? Southern Baptist, don't tell me I was in one of their Southern Baptist churches. And when I went to their, 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 their Friday night things, it was worse than a bar room. I would go to those things, I would sit in that pew and I would be remembering in a bar. I could picture the beer, I could picture the, the jukebox or the band. Don't tell me. That was sin. In John, they will bring a woman caught in adultery. That woman in adultery, Jesus said, you've been saved, you'll be in heaven. What about the men that brought her? <laughs> Most likely they'll go to hell. There are many stories of rich people. Don't tell them, don't say Stiley said rich men don't go to heaven. There's a story, I don't know who it is, but you know, he, he got a business and he paid his employees well. He had a second business. He gave all that money outside his employers and, you know, paying for the oil, whatever. I mean, the surplus of that business, the second business, he gave the missionaries. God gave him a third business place of employment. He paid his employers. He paid what he needed to pay. And the surplus he put into a, to his church. And God gave him another. The guy was actually outwardly rich. And he gave it to the Lord. Don't go out there and say, sorry, said no rich man can go to heaven. I didn't say that. Jesus said it's hard, but it's not impossible. Luke is a medical doctor. He goes to heaven. So Jesus just told the high priest here, he just told the elders, the well-known, the famed people know these things. He says, listen, you know what? I'm going to say what we would say the word today. I don't know what the words are today. The scum are going to go to heaven over you. Because they said, no, we're not, we cannot do the Lord's work. We won't do the Lord's work. And they got on their knees and repented and said, Lord, we'll go. And the, the, the high and mighty one. Oh, we'll go, we'll go. Holy, holy, full of baloney. And you didn't do the work, Lord's work. You thought you did. Oh, Lord, I'll get saved. You went there, some man told you to say this prayer. You didn't get saved. You got ministers and pulpits today. They're working for the devil, Paul told the Corinthian church. For John... All right, going back to John, 
the question that he laid out before him. It has an end. Came unto you in a way of righteousness. So, 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 we cannot answer. So if you look at the question, the baptism of John, what was it? Was it from heaven or from men? Well, we can't answer. Because we say of heaven, well, he's going to say, what happens you believe? If we say of men, they take it for a prophet. Jesus said, the way of righteousness. Jesus said, he came from heaven. So the answer that's correct would have they said out of their own thinking, they would say, why didn't you believe on him? Just because you think your pastor or whoever, priest, pope, you think just because he's in an office of God, don't think he knows God. Because here is the chief priest. They don't know what holiness is. They don't know what righteousness God, Jesus just said. And ye believe him not. Okay, let's go back to what they said. Verse 25. If we say from heaven, he will, he will say, why did you not believe on him? Go back down to what Jesus. Wait, wait, and ye believe him not. The answer is, John's baptism came from heaven. And you do not believe them. And that is the very words that they said each, to each other. They knew what the answer was, but they didn't believe. My friend on Facebook today wrote, he said, I pray for him all the time. He goes out witnessing, passing out gospel church, opens about. He said he was in tears. He said, he said, he said, one of the worst things is to say, I believe in hell, but I don't need Jesus. And that is. I've had people like that. Right here, oh, we know what God is. We know who God is. We know about God, but we don't want to believe him. You see that with a lot of Catholics. Now, you hope, you hope that that Catholic is truly a Christian and not a Catholic, because a Catholic can be saved. But if you follow the ways and the doctrines of the church, you're not saved. Now, every Catholic believes the virgin birth, Every Catholic knows that Jesus has suffered, died, and was buried, and rose again the third day. And many of them don't even believe Christmas is Jesus' birthday. I said that for a reason. And actually, some churches really don't speak about Easter when we talk about the resurrection. I just said that for a reason. I just had to throw that out there. I grew up, I grew up, I was baptized as a captain, even though I was there, but I wasn't there. I hope I peed on the priest. I'm sorry. Um, I had to say, publicans and harlots. So he says, you didn't believe in the righteousness of John coming from heaven. And that's what they talked about. But the politician and harlots, all right, go back to their answer. Verse 26. But if we say of men, the fear of the people for all hold John's a prophet. Go to where Jesus said. But the publicans and harlots, that's the people, believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, the people baptized, the people believed, repented not afterward. That you might believe him. When John came preaching, John came baptizing, some of the people said, No. Then they heard John preach, they heard the testimony of the people, then they said, Yes. And maybe even after Jesus came, behold, the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. I mean, hey, yeah, that's it. Let's get baptized. The Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees, and the chief priests saw it and said, no way. Look at that. You see that woman that John put? That woman was a whore. Okay, she got saved. The town drunk is now getting baptized by John. The alcoholic. That's okay. You didn't, you didn't believe. You're not going to heaven. 
Oh, come on. If John knew who that person was. <laughs> yeah, but God knows who you are. So what Jesus laid out before these men that interrupted his message was, there are two kinds of people. Those who don't believe and those that believe. And the ones you would think that would believe the religious, the high and honor, don't. And the ones you would have the last idea, get saved. And the thing is today, in the medical field, you would think that a doctor that opens up a, a heart, a brain, can cure cancer. You would probably think, hey, that man's got to be right with God. Probably not. You see what makes you say that? They're taught evolution. As far as that guy, all he's doing is operating on a pig, a monkey. I read the other day, he's like, I've been reading a lot of things about kidney. And there's a time that, you know, you would have to be put on a kidney list and all that. Well, now that now they're giving humans uh, the kidneys of pigs. They probably have another thing for Jewish people. They got insulin for diabetics of pigs. And a doctor, a diabetic doctor told me they have something else synthetic for Jewish people. Now, if, if you got the medical field that you're supposed to be talking about God, if you had replaced it with evolution, you got a whole bunch of godless doctors. And they're going to go to hell. Now, the old time doctors, I remember as a kid, we had Dr. Johnson. That guy would tell you God designed. Hey, when he tell you about a surgery or something, he would say God designed this, and this is what this is what God wanted to do. And right now, it's not doing what God prepared for us to do. And we had a doctor, uh, a surgeon, Doctor Lena. He goes, well, you know, the way we were made, it went bad. So I got to go in there. And I got to take it out before it gets worse. The way we remain. I mean, he would talk about God. Today you go in there, well, you know, appendix was, there was no move for appendix and the thing between your ears and whatever it was, it, was, it came long ago when we used to shout and chew the moon, whatever. No, that's not correct. Matter of fact, science has told us that a lot of things that they would think is obsolete in our bodies, it's not obsolete. That little thing that hangs down off your throat. Uh, that was something they were doing. Now we don't need it. No, doctors have come out. It has been designed for the fact is, especially for children, hey, you don't swallow anything you're not supposed to be swallowing. Good job, God. I always thought about, I always thank God right there. Let's say you eat and you eat and eat. Isn't it great that God gave us something? I'm going to be clean as I can be. But whatever you eat can exit out of your body. What if you could eat and eat and, and evolution? Oh, man, I forgot to. I forgot to give him something. He's just going to fill up the food. You know, you can... I look up these weird things all the time. I start asking my smartphone now. You know, and I, I looked up this question one time on the internet. You can drink yourself drown. And what I'm saying is, you can drink so much water, you drown. I didn't think it was possible. You can force yourself to drink and drink. But, you know, your body is not evolution. Your body is God created. And when you go against what God has designed us, you drink too much, even water. Well, you're going to kill yourself. I'm killing myself. All my entire life, I had, I had an improper diet. I had too much sugar. I just ate wrong. I smoked. I am 50-something years old, and God said, okay, now it's time for reaping. And I tell God all the time, with all my physical and, and health elements, it's my fault. There are people, you, and I come all this to say, there are people you think, oh, they got to know God. Sad spot is, they may not. You may think your preacher, I'm not saying all, you may think your preacher is going to go to heaven, he's going to go to hell. That person you think in church may be, oh man, he's definitely going to be in heaven. No, he may have self-righteous. That don't get you to heaven. Well, the Pope, I mean, he's a Pope and all. The Pope, if he doesn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to hell as quick as anything. 
There can be Jehovah Witnesses that will go to heaven. There can be Baptists that go to hell. It's not who you are. And the whole thing comes down to. The whole thing comes down to. Look at verse 32. Ye believed him not. The publicans and harkens believed him. It comes down to coming to heaven is. Did you believe? What did you believe? And what you did not believe. That's what gets you to heaven. And that's Jesus Christ.